and then the record button. There we go. I like to have these saved for later. But hello, welcome to any and everybody watching. And without further ado, let's just get personal. Okay. And would you please share with me a little bit about yourself just to get us started? My name is Delia. My moniker is Queen Delia, um, based on my maiden name, which is King. Um, I am age 46. I live in Arizona right now. I'm sitting in the car because I am the mother to six dogs. So, <laughs> and we wow. live in an currently. So this is my chat space uh, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I so I am an open book. I do not. So my intention is to live authentically as me and bravely as me. So whatever questions you have, whatever you want to know, I'm a, I'm a whale. <laughs> yeah. So free to ask and we'll see what comes up and out and have a fun time. Yes. Thank you for sharing. It's so lovely to get to hear your voice and actually talk with you because we've interacted. A yeah, lot. we've been friends online for a little while, but we haven't really conversed before. Well, uh, you didn't have a platform that you wanted to invite me to. Yeah, before. it's always in the timing. Yeah, and, and the so, time. Mm, yes, it is perfect. And so just to to lay it out on the table for anybody who doesn't already know somehow, my name is Ian. But the real first question is, how did you get started into human design? So, you like the long version of things? Oh, you, as long as you okay. want. So, I, like many others in the world, were in or was in what I considered a dead end job, even though it was a well paying job and people on the outside in looking in would say that it's a lucrative job. Why would you hate this job? But I didn't like the job. I didn't like my relationships. I didn't like myself. Um, so this is around 2018. And as I was walking in my neighborhood on the first day of my vacation from said job, I had taken a month off because I came time from working so hard for a job that I dislike. Right. So I set up a month to be off. So first day of vacation, I and my stepdaughter are walking in our very walkable neighborhood and I'm following all the signs and doing what I shouldn't be doing. And we're chatting and walking across the street. And this car during rush hour decides to blow the pedestrian light and he hits us like he bumps into my shoulder and turns me around. So... Now, on my first day of vacation, I find myself starting short-term disability. Oh. Um, I have time off that I am being paid for. So during this time, this dissatisfaction, resentment, bitterness, all of these things are here. And my husband's reaction to me being hit feels accusatory. Because he's always telling us, you know, be careful. And this is high Trump era, right? I'm a black female, right? So he's like, people are crazy. Be careful. You have to watch what you're doing. So the driver of the truck was a white male. And so all of these things are converging where he has this, I told you to be careful. I told you I didn't like walking. And so from my interpretation of his behavior, like I just got so fed up and I snapped and I never snapped. So I snapped on him and I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you blaming me for this shit? And I'm just walking across the street. I'm So from those pent up emotions, and it wasn't that moment, right? It was my feeling this way for years and years and years and never saying it. Mm -hmm. And so out and so i got the hives and i like i don't really get sick so the hives broke out so all of this shit basically sat me down and i and i assume you're okay with my colorful language right <laughs> yeah. 
So all this shit sat me down. I've been dabbling in cardology, which is the study of playing cards. Okay. Um, and I've been following this creator um, named Aquarius Maximus on her social medias. So now I'm off work. I'm kind of bedridden because the stress and the hives and like literally I can't move because it's very uncomfortable and they are everywhere. Um, so meaning like some untouchable parts are being touched in a not good way. So like I'm literally just laying in the bed. So I took the opportunity to delve into cardiology and start a cardiology certification that I would have been interested in. So the timing for that worked out well. So in the cardiology course, someone mentions human design. And when I looked into that, fuck cardiology like this really feels like home um so i started up into human and i found out that i was a an emotional manifester 6-2 profile etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is the beginning of 2019 um, when i was introduced to the tropical version of human design and so now i am experimenting with the cosmic version of it which is kind of sidereal um just like in astrology you'll have tropical and sidereal so that is my long winding road that got me to my second evolution of experimenting with human design i guess you would say so and here in, we are so in this cosmic human design how, how much has changed for you so I went from a 6-2 profile to 4-6. No, to 2-6. No, I'm lying. Mm -hmm. From 2 to 2-4 two, okay. profile. So the 2 was unconscious. Now it's conscious. And I can see that making sense. The uh, 4, the opportunistic part, I can see how that's been a theme in my life. Um, unconsciously because I didn't. It's kind of hard to admit that you're opportunistic. Like, even though that's what you are, even though that's what you're doing, it's got me in a lot of trouble. I'm sorry, you're breaking up a bit. So, uh oh, can you hear me? Not really. You hear me? Uh oh, can you hear me? No, I still can't hear you. I could just hear a little bit of static and hmm. the video basically stopped at this point. Are there any unnecessary programs running on the phone? Any applications worth closing? I heard you for a moment, kind of. Mm, still pretty bad. What do you think it's called? Now. Wait a second, maybe. I'm not sure if the connection is stable enough. Hmm. 
Well, let's see if we have a rejoining. Can you hear me? I heard something. Hmm. Dang. Can you hear? I can't hear reliably, nor can I see reliably. No. It's at maybe one frame every three or four or five, six, seven seconds. <laughs> Every three, four, five, six. Let me see if I can connect to Wi Fi. Mm. <clears throat> kind of sounds a little better at the moment. Can you see me? I can see you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. But? Well, there was a delay. Hold on, I gotta climb across to sit in oh, the passenger. Gosh. Sit in the driver's seat so I can put on the seat belt so that can stop beeping. Oh, I didn't even hear a beep. Oh, okay. But I have heat now, so that's good. Are you on the Wi-Fi now? Was that changed? I am on Wi-Fi. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. So, sometimes it, it doesn't pick up some of it, but it does seem to be better than it was. It seems to be functioning fairly well. And now? Oh. Got way louder. Is that good or no? Oh, uh, well, it got louder and I can hear myself now. <laughs> so we got some technical difficulties today. <laughs> okay. So now. Can you say no? something for a moment? I can say something for a moment. Yes. <laughs> now my head is just locked into this concept of do we just restart? Because I don't really think I can edit and re-upload because of the way live streaming functions. We don't have to restart because life happens, right? So like, I don't like editing stuff because it happened. <laughs> so, yeah. so for future podcasters, like people who aspire to do what you do, shit happens. So don't let it stop you. No, it doesn't. It doesn't stop me. Nothing hold me back in that sense. There's just always this desire I have to present the highest quality that I can, and it's a shame that we'll have lost what two minutes or something. But it's not really the end of the world or anything. So the beauty is, we had a two minute snafu, but it didn't break our soul, like Beyonce said. Yeah. So, like it didn't. Act anything. So in traditional human design, you see yourself being identified with 6-2 manifester. But right. in, could you go into the change, the difference that you feel with this other system? So the so it's like <clears throat> so for me, because I always want to make sure that I'm sharing my own personal perspective, opinion, whatever. So for me. With tropical human design, it came at the perfect time because I needed something kind of to help me get in touch with myself, right? So when you look at something that's kind of a blueprint, you'll see some things that make sense. But human design is so diverse and differentiated that like you have 64 gates, however many channels and centers, a not self and a true self, that there's going to be overlap. So if I can see myself as a six two, then becoming a 
becoming a 2-4 cosmic um, profile can make sense because the hermitage is there, right? Um, I know that I like to be alone and even have a need for aloneness. So from the 2 and the 6-2 profile being unconscious, and then moving to a 2-4 where it's conscious, now I'm like, I know this about myself and I can admit this and accept this about myself. Um, so the manifester in tropical and the projector, which I'm listed as in cosmic, has a lot of overlap. And so for me, basically a not so manifester is a projector or maybe vice versa. Um, so how many times with so many projected channels in a chart, no matter what system you're looking at, are you initiating when you still need to be waiting for an invitation? So as a manifester, I needed to get in touch with the I, I'm going to do what I want to do type mindset because I didn't have that. I was very people pleasing, which is a general human trait, but also a lot for women. And then also a lot as a black person, like people pleasing can be linked to safety, right? Because if you think of a woman walking down the street being cat called, sometimes it's just safer to indulge that shit than to stand up for yourself. So this history of all these things of people pleasing and holding myself back for a sense of safety. Um, so it all like the cosmic kind of clicked things into place, but the tropical had to be that key to unlock the mindset to be able to see where things are falling into place. And I don't want to overlook gene keys because that's a big point a big purpose in all of it too so how 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 um how long ago was the beginning that the experimentation begin this accident and... so that was 2018 it was september just before my birthday okay uh, and so how so... long how long were you experimenting under the guise of being a manifester before it became a projector up until this past like i only so i heard about cosmic maybe a year ago or maybe more but in the tropical realm when you hear about sidereal hd they're like that doesn't exist that's not a thing and so like i was just i was on that mindset i was like i'll just stick with this because it's making sense for me so the first time i heard about cosmic i ignored it the second time I heard about, and not second time, but the second time where it was enough in my awareness to consider it, I'll say, um, was probably last year. And I became a little more open to the concept of it because I had become more open to the concept of sidereal astrology. So with sidereal astrology, um, I changed from a Virgo sun to a Leo sun. And that's where the mindset came from. The Virgo perfectionism, also kind of people pleasing, shying away from showing up as you because you don't want people to think of you in a negative way to going to a Leo where Leos are like out in the open. This is who I am. I am. I love me as I am. And you can have your thoughts and opinions, but they're not mine. Mm -hmm. So connecting to Leo as my aspirational self, my hidden self that this is how I want to be, but I don't yet have the confidence to be that. So that's what I like. So I consider tropical as a stepping stone that I needed to be able to see the truth of the cosmic or sidereal profile does that's, that make sense well it's just so funny it's so funny and fascinating to me because in the discord server that i'm one of the administrators of that helps moderate and keep the peace and share the knowledge there's somebody who's uh at least in in a human design as i know it they're a one three generator with only the 360. Okay. 
And so this person, however, greatly prefers the side reel. I, I, I call it side reel because to me, it doesn't make sense. I, I, saw, I saw something within it. Side show, side show Bob. <laughs> well, I saw something in one of the other variations because there's multiple people in multiple groups now that have taken human design and made their own system from it. And so at least one of those, I don't know if it was cosmic or some other system, but it basically turned me from a one, three emotional generator into a manifester. And I was just like, no, that's all nonsense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And that was just for me, just for that's, me. It was so just that's everybody's reaction because I've seen manifestors go to projectors like myself. So I'm also looking at my son because I follow his experiment and he went from an emotional generator to an emotional projector. So that whole thing for it's a big him difference. Is, but it makes hella sense for him when I look at how he is versus how I try to force him. So even his variables switch up. So the gen he doesn't have, and not that every generator is built to be a workaholic, but he no. doesn't have in him. So when I was trying to get him interested in school, he hates school, right? So I was teaching him from a left. I'm so so in human design, tropical. I was P R L D R L, and cosmic. I'm quiet, right? Which oh. really fits with how I am. And I don't know if your experiences with me enough would be able to be like, this is how she is. So with him, I was trying to force him to study and take notes and this and that. He hated that. So now he ran into some stuff in school where we decided to homeschool him. Um, so in the second half of sixth grade, he became homeschooled. Now, I have no interest in strategically teaching him. Like, so all my stuff is trying to connect with him on a this is who you are type. Do what feels right for you. My husband is very strategic and he's like, no, he needs to sit in front of the computer for eight hours. You know, that whole mindset. So I forced him from the time he was in kindergarten, like I tried to force him into a school system. So when he got homeschooled, we signed up for this computer program that I was like, OK, let them teach you. So he struggled and fought his way through it. So sixth grade, he kind of did it seven, eight, nine. So he skipped the whole 11th grade. He didn't even log in. And I was like, I'm tired of fourth. <laughs> You are just looking up answers on Google and copying and pasting them anyway. So why should I force you to do that? So he moved to New York with his father and his father wanted to put him in school so that he can be socialized. Right. So I was like, just play the game, do what you need to do, pay attention in class. Um, you know, and I'm still telling him to take notes, but I'm like, you have to go to school. So make the most of it, pay attention and retain the information. So this boy is on high honor roll, does not nice. take notes, does not study, gets all his work done before he leaves school. Um, in New York, they have to take these tests to be able to graduate so remember, he skipped the 11th grade. He's now in 12th grade and he's so he's not taking math. Like so he passes the test that they want him to take off from his receptively taking in information mm -hmm. and being able to pull it, get it pulled out when necessary. So for him, like his tropical design saying you have to study and you have like you're supposed Did to it say he was a quad left or something. No, it he was he was three parts left, one part right. Which part was right? I would have to pull it up. Oh, okay. Easily can. I don't know if me but going this to the screen. This is also okay. why well, it's why I don't make such a big deal about the part. <laughs> well, like for me personally, within my eyes and the way I see reality, 
it's it's purely like we were given human design from Ra and his encounter with the voice. And that's basically just what it is. Now there is Ra- <laughs> there is some difference because I don't judge people for experimenting differently. Mm-hmm. And so like say the gene keys or cosmic human design or any of these other systems, if they work, if they are functional, then I say right. thumbs up, power to you. But when it, com- when it comes to what I actually do and teach and share, I come from not just black and white textbook human design, because this is something I recently learned. I was reading raw about the juxtaposition theory, the actual very old stuff. And he essentially confessed that the voice was colorblind. It only saw black and white. It didn't like color. It didn't want to deal with color. Nuance or real color? Legitimate color. It it couldn't see color. It sees black or white. It was black or white. It was duality. Yes or no. There is no in between. It's always yes or no. And it's, it's an infinite hierarchy of black on top of white on top of black on top of white forever. One's in- exactly, right. exactly. This binary system. And Ra himself stated he was a dualist through and through. It was all about the binary, the left or the right, the black or the white. And in reality, as human beings, we're much more of six than we are of two. We have six fundamental geometries, the genetic continuity of line to color to tone. The primary human backbone is a triple six, (laughs) but that triple six comes out of a five. And so for me, it just doesn't bother me if other people experiment differently because that's part of the journey. That's part of the process. And so, so long as it works, that's what I think is so important. It just has this curiosity in my head of, so in theory, there could be manifestors pretending to be projectors or projectors pretending to be generators. And how long does that work? What does that really feel like? That Will it last forever or will eventually there be a shift or a return and a recognition of some higher thing? It's like, you know? So, yeah, so that's what I think I experienced and other people who are in the cosmic. But I think it also can go reverse. So I think it's what your awareness level is and what you are open to receiving. So the first time cosmic, nah, second time, okay, let me check it out. Uh, Manifested or projected, that doesn't make sense. Um, Third time. And being open to knowing that there are levels to this, right? So that's when I was like, wait a minute. Because over time, like I study and I can look at my manifester version of the experiment. And I had actually practiced, started thinking like a projector in the sense of, let me see what life is like when I wait for people to invite me in rather than feeling like I can just insert myself like a manifester from my experience feels like they can insert themselves into anything. And that's kind of how it's presented, right? In the literature, (laughs) manifestors are the Kings and the Queens and the royalty and they initiate and they, do this and that. And so like with my husband, who is my biggest variable, uh, yeah. like I'm the control, he's a variable. And funnily enough, I have a degree in chemistry. <laughs> oh, very um, cool. So the experiment, the experientialism of human design was attractive to me because it's oh, very right. And I like the concept of experimenting with things to see what the outcomes are. So I completely get how one can be turned off if you identify as a manifester. And now, and I even, t- when I talk to a manifester about me starting to experiment with um, life as a projector, they were like, oh, we're manifestors. Can't nobody tell us to do shit. We ain't waiting for shit. And I was like, <laughs> okay. But for me, especially now that I can look back over my life 
from when I've waited or received invitations that were correct and how life worked out really well versus when I tried to initiate things that nobody asked for. (laughs) So like I can see in my own personal experience, the validity and accuracy of the idea of me being a projector. But bottom line is no piece of paper can tell you who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody can look at my tropical chart and make it make sense for me. But I can look also at my cosmic chart and see how it makes even more sense. Like the ego, because now I'm an ego projected projector, Mm. which is still in alignment kind of with a manifesto. You do what you want to do. You do it what feels right for you, what feels correct for you. Um, But in my entire life, I was not doing things unless there was something in it for me that I wanted. (laughs) <laughs> so I, I, I'm on Twitter a lot and I do Twitter threads and I told the story of my aunt being in human resources and me going with her as her little helper around the office. So filing stuff, running errands or whatever, but as a little girl. So when she learned the concept of WIFM, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me, which is the motivation of people when they decide what job they want to do or how much effort they're willing to put into something that connected with me. And I couldn't have been more than 10, 12, 15, like very relatively young. And like, I hate going shopping, but I would go shopping with them because I knew that I would get rewarded for being there. I like to eat. So after shopping, we go eat. Now, if they say we're not going to eat, then no, I don't want to go shopping. I'll sit in the house bored or reading or doing whatever I do. Um, So just all these little things that make a projector a projector are things that I do. And not to say that you can't pinpoint those same things in my tropical chart, because like I said, it's there. But the benefits of the cosmic chart for me is being given a slightly new perspective to evaluate and experience and experiment with. Um, So in the end, I am a sovereign being, right? So my whole thing is to remember who I am with or without human design or astrology. So all of these are just little breadcrumbs to follow as I reconnect to what I want, who I am, how I be, how I want to be, what's important for me, who's worthy of being in my presence. So all of it just comes down to who the fuck are you and what the fuck do you want? So like, I don't get (laughs) caught up. And so you can say cosmic is total bullshit and you're stupid for following it. And I can say you're right. (laughs) Not you, but I'm sure people say that even. Oh, people people would. Oh, for sure. And I mean, I'll be like, you're right. But this is my path of least resistance right now and that is that's for me so that's where it is you see that's where it is because i had actually just i I re-uploaded something i found on another channel from bashar i don't know if you've ever heard of bashar before and abraham yeah i've been uh, for me for me it was specifically bashar like even when i was between 12 and 14 years old, I was listening to Bashar for hours and practicing the meditations and stuff. And so finding that path of least resistance to me has always been really important. And so I would never judge or call somebody stupid because what works for me doesn't feel good for them. And I would never judge them for that. I'll always just give like, oh, if you want my perspective, I'll give you my perspective. But I could never even dream of forcing my perspective on somebody because I think I'm a know-it-all or something like, even if I feel like I know everything and I can explain anything, that doesn't mean you care. (laughs) Or that it's accurate for that person, right? (laughs) It's the the relativity, you know, it's the relativity of it all. And so to experience our life, our way. So what is work where works well for you because like there are people who are living successful or peaceful satisfactory surprise like they're living their tropical design 
to their full level of whatever it is or uh, people heard? use and so have, have you heard, heard of what? the four percent of four percent i have right so so the excited you just got me so oh so okay so i don't know the exact references but i can pull them up and share them but there are instances in robert aka rahuru's ex uh his talks where he gives information on his tropical design but also on his cosmic or sidereal information i think he's flubbed where he called himself one thing but he had called himself something else in another talk well i mean this is the thing he's a human just like any of us and so he's gonna make mistakes i mean he said the so wrong thing it, or done the wrong it, thing you know right so let's say somebody's being handled like a celebrity right and they have public relation people who tell them what to say so the entity told him what to say and maybe what not to say and so what if he robert the man had a slip up and gave like a little breadcrumb that wasn't supposed to come out does well, that I make think, sense i think everything that he did is exactly as it was supposed to i think all of life is perfect and there's no way to avoid the perfection it's vanity to imagine oh woe is me i'm suffering nobody understands it's, right, yeah. it's nonsense. I think life is perfect uh, and everything had to be exactly as it was to bring us to where we are and to take us where we're going. So the excitement of the 4% of the 4% mm -hmm. is what if the 4% are the ones that connect to one version of human design? And then of that 4% that connects to human design, there is a 4% that connects to the next level or a sidereal or cosmic part. Well, what, what really strikes me the most about the concept of 4% of 4% is this idea, because he said there is a so-called promise mm -hmm. of the 11 centered being. Mm. He, he, he said that there's like a promise, but it's never going to happen. Like he was given the promise by the voice of this 11 centered potential, but due to his pessimistic third line mind, every activation in his mind was third line, was deeply pessimistic. He thought it was not possible to ever happen. It's like us not thinking that Wi-Fi in a vehicle is possible because all we know is a clunky Apple computer back in the 80s. Right. When, when they used to be bigger than a building is the whole computer and you have to punch cards and stuff. And now we have this little device this big that can do everything you can imagine. So what I love about life and what I see in society and my husband, I, I won't say we argue because I started removing myself from the conversations. Oh, very is cool. that it looks bad, but like more and more people and maybe it's just people that i can see in my frequency but i'm around so much awareness and self-awareness and acceptance of potentiality like mm -hmm. so i grew up in church so we another hierarchy right you can only get this high because you can't be higher than jesus mm -hmm. you can't be higher than mary or god like so there's a limit on your potentiality but even with rod his pessimism um there is potentiality that we can meet gene keys was kind of like the answer to rise dare i say misogynistic approach to <laughs> well, i mean that's to, fair to human design because raw was old-fashioned centered approach to human design he um, gave so the most he gave the most seven centered lens on nine centered reality we could imagine and he talks a lot about human design kind of being for the not self, which maybe. Well, he taught, he taught for the lowest common denominator because you see, he had this thing where he discovered and he saw that people were just, they didn't get it. They couldn't click into it. And so he, he began teaching to the lowest common denominator. It's like, I've seen talks, I've heard talks where he was saying, I am now teaching, like I've done my work. I've, I've outlined human design. I've done all I have to do. Now what I'm doing is I'm talking to those people who don't give a shit. 
to those people who couldn't be bothered. I want to speak in a way that can hit them and impact them positively. And so for me, it just garners respect because it's like he had to speak in such a way that people who've never heard about human design and people who have been practicing for decades can, can sit be, in the Yes, they can sit in the same room and it's like, what what can you even say? What is left to say? What's possible? What's reasonable to say? What can you even say? It's like there's so little he could do. And yeah. if you and I, and I I would say, well, I don't know if there's so little he could do. I think that well, that's was, just the way it's, it's you gotta be so sharp. So okay, incarnation cross. In tropical, I am left angle cross of informing too. So that worked well with my manifestor mindset informing. So like you'll hear so many manifestors talk about the impossibility of informing. Like, why do I have to tell people this? Or I don't like to, because it's <laughs> like, you've heard that before, haven't you? Like, why do I have to inform? And our strategy isn't informing, it's initiating. And even Ryle say that informing is kind of public relations or being politically correct. Yeah, he, he said it wasn't, um, he said it wasn't so much of a mechanical strategy as it was a social strategy. Yeah, so my incarnation cross of informing was it made sense for how I present information, right? So in both systems, I have defined Ajna and throat connected in different ways. So now I am right angle cross of explanation. And I don't mm. know if you ever, I think you said my post, did you say one of my, my posts are too long? Was that you? You make you make it? some really long ass posts. Yeah, <laughs> huge. <laughs> So I make my posts, and if you ever take the time to read them, I think that I, like Ra, try to meet each person at whatever level they are. Um, so I'll sprinkle in some human design stuff, and so then I'll have to kind of explain it. Um, <clears throat> but so now with this explanation, like I have literally for the past year or two been working on, even before I knew about the explanation cross, um, trying to present information in a way that people can understand what I mean. So in corporate America, I worked at this company for 20 plus years and I always excelled. And my bosses would be like, you're the highest performer. How do you do that? Can you teach other people to <laughs> Like, how can I teach people to be me? So before I quit the job, my last manager was like, you can figure out how to do it. Like, and so that stuck with me. And so now I was like, wait a minute, I can show people or tell people how I think. And so I learned how to, and I don't do it as well, maybe verbally, because I, I don't talk a lot in real life, but I social media a lot. So if on my Twitter posts and I, and I consider I as me, my higher self, the unit, like the collective I, um, viewing things from a point of awareness and being aware of being aware of a black. Um, but I figure out how to explain the points that I want to get across in a way that I think people can get whatever they need from it. Um, so yes, in my long ass posts, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that people, no matter what level they are, even from the religious to the complete opposite of that can find value in connecting to themselves. So my whole thing is, you don't have to give a fuck about what I say. You don't have to read my posts. You have to connect to who you are. That is your purpose in life is to remember who you are. Remember why you were born. And remember that like the stuff that you think that you are is not probably you. That's probably you conceptualizing something or Gosh. creating persona that, can, that you think makes your life easy to live. And I can only say that because... That has been my life. There's an ancient yoga practice, and it's basically not it, or not this, or not mm -hmm. that. 
and it's this continual not this not this not this not this not this not this mm -hmm. and so for me up at some point it came to this recognition and acceptance of at least a possibility that every single thought might be different from reality like it might be impossible to actually have a quote true unquote thought because it's mm -hmm. just a thought you know it's not matter it's not physical stuff it's a different thing and so what i was able to accept oh, okay maybe it's not actually possible to capture everything within words that actually was a big freedom moment for me mm -hmm. like When it comes to the, see, the biggest thing that's on my head right now is this difference between the manifestor and the projector. Okay. Because they are different, but they're not as different as, say, going from a generator to any of the other types. Mm -hmm. Because that's the most obvious type, like as a generator. Like for me, discovering, oh, I'm not a manifestor. I don't have to push the river. I don't have to initiate things. I don't have to go out there and make it happen. I just respond to life. And in my experimentation, in my waiting to respond, pure magic. It's just synchronicity. Like, I, I can't avoid seeing the magic of life all the time. You are traffically a generator? Yeah. Okay. So most likely so, not in the other one. <laughs> right. So even with a generator to manifestor, it's not as different as you would think. Oh, it's huge. No, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> well, manifestors still wait to respond, but no, you're but waiting to respond to what life gives you to respond to. And it's not very different from a generator. I can I describe don't. it, though. I can describe it linguistically, the differences okay. of what they're waiting for. So the generator is waiting to respond to life. It's waiting to respond to something. But the mm -hmm. manifestor is not waiting to respond. The manifestor is waiting for the impulse. They're waiting from a signal within the body that, oh, we're about to do something. Let me let people know so I don't hurt them on my way to do this thing. But so, remember, the letting people know is not the is not necessary. That's just well, it's the strategy. It's the strategy. You know, it's okay. It's it's public relation, like Ross said, right? It's, I mean, isn't it all? It's all learning how to interact with each other. Right. So I don't see, so you see, I mean, I don't myself see a huge. So the question though for you is as something to think about or to pay attention to, it comes down mm -hmm. to the difference between the projector and the manifester because the projector waits for the invitation on the most surface level way, but in a more subtle level, it's waiting for recognition. So if you see that another person can actually see you, if you can tell that another person can hear what you're saying and they can actually hear you and not just some fantasy and they get mad at you because they're whatever. Right. And so there's a, that difference between waiting for that inner impulse and then you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Ideally letting people you care about know so that they don't get hurt versus waiting for somebody to recognize you and to see you first and then explaining or communicating to them from that and so as a projector is not like you sit still in meditation until geez. somebody in i mean unless you're <laughs> as a projector which is also kind of like a leo like you live your life you do the things that make you feel good and you gather skills and experiences and this and that and you talk about what you want to talk about but you just don't go into people's auras which is the becomes the repelling manifester thing right i can give you, another you just don't you just do what you do so like and i think with a manifester initiation if you can pay attention to the quality of the output from your initiations right so you get an urge to do something and well see it just sounds like you're driving impact though because this is a, an important distinction between but that manifester thing is impact right? exactly see a manifester right. you literally see impact you see what makes the difference mm -hmm. but there's a difference between what a manifester sees they see impact 
and what mm -hmm. the projector sees because the projector sees success they see the elements that build success itself okay. and so if there is ever a way in which you can distinguish the difference of elements that create success versus impact like what am i actually looking at in life am i looking at just impact or am i looking at the actual building blocks of success itself that for me that's an interesting question okay. for the situation so i would have to consider what i look at and so for me i see i measure success and how well do my interactions get me what i want <laughs> Oh, so sure. even with I practice even before this whole projector thing, I had started practicing to ask questions in a way to get the answers that satisfy my questions. Mm -hmm. So like I again, my husband, I practice on him and he remained a generator from both systems. Oh um, really? Interesting. Yeah. So generators, because you're 90% of the world. Like 60 right? or 70, so, yeah. So it's a good opportunity for you to still remain that because the odds are in your favor. <laughs> um, but for him, like I have to learn how to ask questions in a way to navigate him to answer what the what I'm asking to reduce the frustration for both of us. Of what do you want from me? Because I'm like, well, you didn't answer the question that I asked. Um, mm. So success in interactions in that way so for him um i listen and i learn how to change his moods kind of by getting him to talk about the things that feel good so i have to ask the questions mm. that kind of him talking in that way oh, and cool. so for me that is more in my natural wheelhouse than manifesting so i initiate and that's why we're getting divorced right now oh. so i'm that part so we're we're in the process of getting divorced <laughs> final this week um, well he already lives in a different state right <laughs> no he lives in the arts well he no we're here together oh okay so my son lives with his father who is my first husband oh, okay so initiating for me leads to divorce <laughs> because yeah so <laughs> what's well, part of the magic of life in that just because we're following our type strategy and inner authority it doesn't mean there's going to be no mistakes or there's going to be no problems it just means that when there is a quote problem unquote it's something you can actually learn from as opposed to something that's going to cause more problems down the road because you're trying to adapt to some false idea and so the question on my mind now is about authority. Did your authority change? From emotional to ego projected. Oh, okay. That's still pretty kind of so, sort of similar in a sense. But I also think that that kind of is manifestorish, right? Because <laughs> if I get an urge or an inclination or a, a pull, so. Well, I see what I think what i'm seeing at least is that you're you're working in between these two potentials and you're enjoying yourself along the way and that's what really matters because and this is something that's very interesting i had just made a an 18 minute recording just reading raw just 18 minutes of reading raw and it was on the left and the right the difference mm -hmm. between them and the relationship they have with each other and essentially when the right is really steeped in their inner authority like when you actually know inner authority you know who you are and how to make decisions as yourself you can let go of strategy you can let go of the left because we don't need that old stuff anymore and so that's why to me it's always been the inner authority that's even more important than the type strategy even though they're essentially equal and they work together but the shift you've made from this 6-2 emotional manifester to a 2-4 ego projector. The difference there is still there's there's this sense I get that you're get you're just getting in touch with your authority. And who cares whatever system or whatever words we're using? You're you're discovering who you are and you're getting farther along the path. And that's what matters. 
And even now, I am moving away from the terminology of human design, period. So I'm starting to describe my experiences without the connection to human design. Because ultimately, I think that is what's best for my gift to the world. <laughs> well, you right? see, it's so funny, too, because the there's a 6-2 generator, the woman who introduced me to human design. Mm -hmm. She like she tries to encourage me to talk about things other than human design. Because it's like, well, if you're just talking about this thing, then you're not really, you might not be living it. You know, you might not really be doing it. But That's funny. I, I look at my chart and what I am within it and everything is explained. Everything makes perfect sense. It's all plain as day right in front of me. Like I, I, I'm getting into the very deep end now, but I'm, I'm, I do resonance mapping and base orientation now as well. And so I looked at my base and as it turns out, there's actually a base that I have no activations within. I have absolutely no base three, the base of being the base of chemistry. And so for me, it was just so fascinating because I'm often attracted to people who are base three. It's like people who just have a natural way of being. It's like, wow, Absolutely. look at that being out there. So you can deep dive into the cosmic versus tropical well, that's a, based our conversations. That's a You'll big thing there. There, and this is that. That's a big difference. But Aren't there 13 yeah. signs in the cosmic? Is that one of the differences too? No? No. Oh, okay. So we can So there is 13 sign astrology. There's a 13 um, sign human design, I believe, too. So there's that option. And so this is the funny thing. Genetic matrix has a sidereal option, which I'm like, why would that be there if it wasn't a consideration? So <laughs> So well, the guy who things. the guy who makes genetic matrix actually upsets a lot of people because apparently the calculations are done a little differently from every other website. I've heard that too. Yeah, Jonah Dempsey actually had some big argument conversation situation with the founder. I think it's even on YouTube, but I, I need to watch it one of these days. But haven't gotten around so, to it. So, like from Ra and his little slips, and then genetic matrix. So I'm like, who even knows? what's what the so the only way yeah. to know is to experiment really with the whole thing so that's why like i said i'm experimenting so who knows i may wake up one day and be like eh, i'm gonna be a manifester but in reality i am going to develop a blueprint i call it my bible my basic instructions before leaving earth and that is what i share so there yes. was i was kind of disappointed um because i talked about i love that human. just that <laughs> your definition of bible it's so good <laughs> that's that's all of us so i grew up in church so that's the bible that's the acronym from back in the day basic and i'm like why would jesus have basic instructions before he left earth and i would not right because my experience is as valid is as he is and Fine. maybe or enlightened and whatever, but like literally each of us are walking Bibles, whether we're religious or not. Like we each develop a blueprint that works for us or that doesn't work. And with the choice to look at what doesn't work, have the ability to create a, an update to that manual. So that's why I'm like, okay, I've shared a lot of human design knowledge about six two emotional manifester left angle like all the, like i've shared that knowledge and now i'm sharing the knowledge of me learning and experimenting with cosmic human design that knowledge is correct no matter if it fits me or not i'm sharing the facts of the data right so a two four experiences this textbook wise right a projector has this these characteristics and of course we are eight billion people so there are eight billion variations and nuances that you have to find in your own experiment i'm just uh, sharing my observations and what i'm 
testing, testing out. So you take what works for you and what doesn't. But mm -hmm. if I share a theme, it's accurate to the knowledge of human design that was given. And it's applicable to whichever system you follow, right? <laughs> Because a 2-4 in tropical is a 2-4 in cosmic. I don't think that changes. Well, I thought you you went from a 6-2 to a 2-4. No, I'm just saying a 2-4. If I remained a 6-2 in cosmic, the 6-2 description mm -hmm. doesn't change. So, right, that's right. fair. Because basically when we're talking about lines, colors, and tones, we're talking about the six fundamental ways of movement through space and time so it's fundamental geometry it's about up down left right and the diagonals right so the adjective that we put in front of human design doesn't change that so whether well, it's is, or cosmic it doesn't change well the thing that changes is the the calculations change and the actual behaviors do change because you went from manifestor to projector. So the, the behavior would change the, the, the real thing if is dictionary. It doesn't say tropical manifestor does this cosmic manifestor does that. No, cause it's it just was, manifestor. Right. So that's what doesn't change. Mm -hmm. so the only thing that changes are numbers that humans calculate, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> these calculations so even the voice as he gave it to Ra or Robert did Robert transmit that information authentically and fully like look at the Bible we say that these wow. are the inspired words from God yeah but they're written by humans exactly <laughs> they're written by humans that filter that you don't necessarily know so I enjoy new things i enjoy things that fascinate me that light me up that give me an interest in diving deeper so where i was in tropical human design apparently left space for me to go to a new level through cosmic so that is just my trajectory and my <laughs> right my and i love that you have the open-minded perspective to be able to say maybe someday i'll wake up and i won't believe what i believe today and that's okay. And, and that's only because of my experiences. One day I woke up and was like, why is Jesus my lover? Why is Jesus my, why am I married you, to Jesus? Have you ever listened to Rudolf Steiner? I don't believe oh, that I have. Okay, I, because basically Rudolf Steiner, there's, there's mm -hmm. a channel here on YouTube wherein there's somebody who's actually done like hundreds of hours of reading Rudolf Steiner's work. And he came about, he was born after 1781. So it was after the shift to nine centered mm -hmm. reality that Rudolf Steiner was born. And he used certain terms like even differentiation or uniqueness. And mm -hmm. I was like, how do you know this stuff this long ago? But Rudolf Steiner, I don't know if there's anybody who could speak about Christ more accurately or more eloquently than Mr. Steiner. Like his perspective was, it blew my mind wide open and it helped me a whole lot with kind of coming to terms with all these Christ. terms. Yes, the Christ <laughs> consciousness, exactly. Because it was about, well, hold on, no. Christ consciousness in church, because that's not no. <laughs> You're not Christ. How dare you say that you're Christ? Then you're then you're the antichrist. But yep. the thing was is so if we look up in the sky, there's a thing called the sun. Okay. And there's also a whole bunch of stars. And the story I've been given goes, well, there's only one sun. There's only one Christ that rises every morning and sets every night. And it was the spirit of our soul. It was the spirit of the sun that actually incarnated on earth and caused this shock wave that ended up as Christianity. And so it's awakening the spirit of the soul within you, awakening the Christ within you is the second coming. That is the savior. That is the rapture. And Rudolf Steiner explained it in such an incredible way. Like it went all the way down to there are metals in the center of the earth that are not only so hot, but they're influencing your imagination 
because you have the metals in the core of the earth and then the stars out billions of miles away. We have the above and the below. And then up here in the middle on the surface, this is us humans in between it all. And it's all connected, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is no separation, but yep. in our mind. That's the biggest thing right there. The separation is the illusion. So in 2019, around the time of this car accident, I uh, got high one day uh, with marijuana. Wow. And I was sitting there and I started paying attention to all my thoughts. And that was the first time that I had. So I don't know. So do you know that not everybody can hear their thoughts? Apparently, some people don't have an inner monologue at all. Right. So I am not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> but this day when I was high sitting there was the first time that I started paying attention to the thoughts. Ooh. And so this is still my manifester phase. So I was giving an urge to write down my thoughts. So I got a pad and a pencil or a pen, whatever it was. And I was, and I just sat there and I was writing, writing, writing for hours and hours. And then my hand got tired. So I went into my room and, you know, told my husband and son that i leave me alone because I have something that I have to write. So I went to typing it out and like for 24 hours, I couldn't sleep. I would wake up and just wanted to write all this stuff down. And I was like, I should publish this in a book, which I did. Oh. And then unpublished the book because it was too crazy, right? <laughs> but so I, during this time frame, I was meditating a lot and I had been given in meditation this idea of void consciousness. Oh. Like everything is just blackness and conscious, but it's void because it's everything and it's nothing, right? And so I would write about that. And so when I published this book, I started seeing as I typed up everything that I had written, um, I started seeing a pattern of fears that was coming evident. And so I was and I learned later that a phrase for this is stream of conscious writing. Right. But that's when I first questioned the idea of being a channeler. So mm -hmm. receiving channeled messages and sharing them. And I talked to some other people throughout my lifetime and they were like, you have these gifts and you are afraid to use them and you're afraid to let them out. And they're just sitting in you. And like, basically spirit is kind of tired of your bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like getting all these readings and asking all this stuff and the answers are within you you're so afraid you've been conditioned to be so afraid to hide. And so that is around the same time that human design was present in my life. And so all of these things works together. So the void consciousness thing and the idea of, I am afraid to admit my equality, quote unquote, with Jesus and accept wow. that. And even then your equality with God, mm -hmm. the constructs of God. And so like, I just see that people are so afraid because I've been so afraid to admit that, okay, there can be a being as God, but I am too God, right? I too have these powers. Even like if you, you're not, don't receive channel messages, like you really do shit every day. You're not necessarily walking across water realistically, but you are waking up, rising and descending every day like the sun. Um, but just this notion of whatever your version of God looks like, if you think about, I read a lot of science fiction, watch a lot of science fiction, and the trajectory of all of these gods are that they go through periods of not knowing who they are and then not accepting who they are. And then when they come into acceptance is right in time for them to say they're part of the world. Cause all of yeah. these God, they're in different parts. So during the same time with meditation, I thought about how a creator can put different bundles of 
people in different parts of the earth. And this person was given the idea of Christianity, that person, the idea of human design, this person, the idea of transgenderism or any concept that we have, each person is given their own version of what is correct for them. And we don't accept that there are 8 billion versions of God. Like we say, we say, no, you have these three options to choose from. You have these three <laughs> and that's the foolishness that causes wars. Mm-hmm. So like we've had this discussion, like you believe what you want to believe. And it's up to me to come to terms with you have every right to believe what you want to believe. Like you're not hurting me. Even if my mind says I'm being hurt, like you're literally not hurting me. Any pain that I feel, even if it's physical, my mind has to filter that into pain because it's just a sensation until I tell it to be something different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's so I think it's awesome because it takes me even back to Steiner again, essentially the self of God, the Godhood of self. And it's a Mm -hmm. shift the shift that happened even evolutionarily on our planet. So part of it says is that way back in the old times, before the dark ages, when we looked up at the sky with deep reverence, because we knew there's the God rising and there's God (laughs) setting. It was just everywhere. You didn't have to talk about it because you could feel it. Everybody knew it. And then we went through a dark age wherein people forgot. They couldn't see it anymore. And essentially what happened, even going to Nietzsche, the the philosopher who said Mm -hmm. God is is dead, what he was saying is that the external God on the outside, it's no longer on the outside. It's in you. It is Exactly. It's on the inside of you. And if you can hear God within, if you can hear your own inner authority, that's all you need to navigate this plane. That's all you need. (laughs) Fucked us up big time, right? Because you talked <laughs> about feeling and being more so than putting words to describe it. Right. Because like we can make up words all day long. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to. It's in the interpretation. The shit we say, we don't even believe it. Like we just say it and it literally sounds like we are programmed to follow this script and we just regurgitate it. That's what school, that's why my son being in school, I felt so conflicted because I'm like, he's in there learning shit that's not true. That's not beneficial that, but I have to force him to go. Uh, and my, it's so bad because I would tell our son, like, I know it's bullshit, but you just have to go. And he was like, why are you telling him that school? And I was like, he already knows <laughs> because they're in school talking about how wasteful it is. I went, I graduated high school in 94. We were talking about it back then. So it's not wow. like these are new concepts. There are just people that are becoming bold enough to say the stuff out loud. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and, why I'm so grateful that we're alive today because it's not going to be like it was yesterday. Like we're, that's why we're talking about the dark ages. We're still in the dark ages. <laughs> we got it. It's right here, though. It's right now. 2027 is right around the corner. And from other, I listen to all kinds of different sources. And they so, all talk about that same time frame. Well, they talk about the time frames. Yeah. But something I've been given is this idea that 2012 did mark a shift in the holistic structure. It marked when the positivity actually began to become just that quarter of a percent more than the negative when the the, the yes the tipping of the scales right at 2012 which is really funny for me because in 2012 i had a complete loss of touch with reality i had a full psychotic break i was going to college and quite literally it's like every single moment of my life every movement of people Mm. around me every sound it was all choreographed it was like a non-stop music video for weeks like literally it's like a choreographed music video they're aware like what was what was your part in the dance i was watching it i was more so just like uh, enthralled by wow look at this 
What? <laughs> I've Kevin got a really lot of respect for Eckhart. Yeah. Talk about that same thing. Like he's like, what is this? Yeah. Gotta... In a movie. Right. It's like I, I have no choice here. I'm just watching this thing happen. So let me tell you, another time I was high after that first time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm a yoga, I'm a certified yoga instructor. Yeah, me too. So I'm sitting there and I started feeling my body and I started letting my movements go toward my body. Cause in yoga, you're taught to create movement. You're not taught to be the vessel for movement. Does that make sense? That nuance? Well, I'm not sure if I agree, but we were all taught by different people. And so perhaps you were taught that by those people. Well, the concept of yoga classes is do this, then do this, then do this, then right, do that's this. The, it's that's Western yoga. That's like neo okay. yoga. Like when they say, do you know what Tantra is? And people say, yeah, it's when you're intimate with somebody. It's like sex, right? And it's like, no, that's called neo Tantra. That's a Good. Western bastardization of the truth. <laughs> So, so I taught, I learned Western yoga. Yes, of course. And so of course the eight limbs of yoga, of Classic. course you learn that. But so I was sitting there one day and I was like, I felt like a, a robot waking up yes. and then I, and I let my body move like, okay, I, I have a program within me and I want to let this program like. I want to be the passenger in the vehicle. Ooh. So that I buy the away and, and like I was doing shit that I couldn't have done that I was not able to do in a regular yoga class. And I had heard of somebody saying that their husband experienced a spiritual awakening and they started doing yoga. Mm -hmm. And our bodies, natural movements without our minds, encumbrances, and direction is to be in alignment with itself what's the best feeling thing so when you let your body lead the way which is the whole premise of human design like you get into the environments and the situations that are correct for you so that's why even if the paper says i'm a six two manifester or a two four actor it does not matter when i let my body lead I'll naturally wait if it's the right thing to do because mm -hmm. I want the best possible outcome of every scenario. So when you get your mind out of it, then the words don't matter. So you go back to the human connection, the animal, the natural connection of we are energy, we are vibes, we are auras, we are not language. Well, so, and that's why I think it's the beauty of it all is because you're, you're, you're describing the the awakening of the inner authority, the actual kundalini awakening when Mother Earth awakens within you. And it's like, like how the voice of Ra, it wasn't a, a male voice that spoke to him. It was a woman. Oh, was it? Was it not? Yeah. He said it sounded like a, well, my interpretation or summary of what the voice sounded like to Ra is that it sounded like a, 150 year old chain smoking woman like um, are you are you ready to work dog <laughs> so my interpretation that of that is like a computer <laughs> well so, i see it as like the spirit of gaia like the the spirit of the earth spoke to him and it was like hey time to get to work and he got terrified like he was just because he said people were like well don't you want it to happen again and he's like oh no I don't want to have that encounter again. My life was it eight days? Yeah, it was something like an eight or twelve or sixteen day encounter where he didn't eat and his dog didn't move until yeah. afterwards. So he slowed time down, basically. He was in one of the most transcendental states a human being could be in. So, so, so yeah, fun, yeah. Do, are you are you tired? I see, are you losing focus? I don't know about losing focus, but we have been over an hour. If you want to keep chatting, we can. Or if you're feeling around done, we could end pretty soon, whatever works. What do you want? 
<laughs> Do you have more to say? Do you have room to hear more? Oh, sure. So, okay, you talked about the woman's voice. Mm -hmm. And last year, I started talking about her, capital H-E-R, because I was like, you cannot have... So the problem with religion and even, like, all of this shit is male-centered. And I was like, you can't... First of all, God would not be a he. It would be a they, if anything. So God would be <laughs> transgender or non-binary or whatever. whatever. Androgynous. I think that's a good term for it. Okay, we'll go with that. But it would not be a he. And if anything, it would be a she. Because even in human language, you can't have so many words if you took her, H-E-R, out of it. You wouldn't have father, mother, sister, brother. Like, all of these words together have her in it. So I was given that in one of my states. Um, and so that's where you voice was a female voice. And I... Like that makes hella sense. Um, yeah, I mean, I've always thought that, that the woman is superior, and men are here to protect her, not to rule her. Right? Like God, you're supposed I mean, to, of course, <laughs> protect her so that she can continue creating and producing and so, doing the things that we need to sustain. Like even when world. I was a kid, even when I was a child, I got this sense that oh, okay, so men the male side, they think they run the world. They think they're in control. But what happens when mm -hmm. a man and a woman are together is that the woman has control over the man because the man gives his power to her. He surrenders to her. And so it's like there's these kings and they think they're the rulers, but in fact, the queen rules the king. And so I've always thought that, oh, women actually rule the world. Like women are superior to men. That was always just like, well, I mean, babies come from women. <laughs> I mean, the physical authority is what created the idea of male dominance, male superiority. Like that, because you can beat a woman into submission, you think you've done something, right? So, this whole okay. physical dominance that men think that, oh, we're stronger, so we are over you. And that's why religion is like they subordinate. It's strategic leftness, you know, it's old and world. That's content. just the trajectory that I think we all. I'm sorry, the connection's breaking again. Take up from in that. So do you remember? I forgot the name of them, but those like five bones. There's five what? Oh. You remember those five balls that are on the strings and you. Hmm. I'm sorry, the connection is dying. Hit one, and it hits the other one, and then they have to come into balance. Five silver balls. Can you hear that? Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Can you hear me? Oh, that's okay. Like when you have you have a ball that hey, hits sirrah, over here, sirrah. and it goes ding, 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 ding. Um, but that's what that's what I think is happening right now. So with the and then they have to come into balance. They get out of whack. And I think things are coming into greater balance with every breath. Me too, but, and they have to feel out of whack at first just because that's how they go. And I don't know the name well, of those little balls. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either, but I know what you're talking about. It's the it's a conservation or a transference of energy wherein it moves immediately through these still objects that have no distance between them. And the energy is transferred from this side to that side. And it just tap, dink, tap, dink, tap, dink. And then they come into peace. Newton's cradle is what they're called. That's interesting. I've never heard that name, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, Newton Cradle Balance Balls. Oh, I think the audio is better. 
that's what I think of when people talk about how bad things are getting right now. And I'm like, they're not getting bad. They're getting balanced. But we were so far on one side of the spectrum. And now we have to deal with the overcorrection. It's, it's why as I'm... People- it's why I'm so happy and joyfully able to accept the superiority of the female over the male is because, well, for a long time, the male has pretended to be superior. And just to counterbalance the scales, I'm totally okay saying that two things that are in fact equal, there's a difference, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and there is a fundamental difference and it's okay. So now we have to deal with the the male strategic ruling of the world and now we're gonna fuck up shit for a little bit and then we have to experience both sides of it which we haven't in our lifetime or in the past 400 500 however many years we've never had balance like but now we got four years left it's always been a ruling class and everybody four years well, four years and two days before the next species is born. You know, it's like right here. Our turn is in 2020. It might be late 2026 or 2027. But it, it's a, it is. I'm excited. to, And I don't know what's happening. I have had dreams of leading youth, like running and checking them to this kind of abandoned building and keeping them safe. So like, I, I don't, I wouldn't put it past me having to house raves or like just. For sure. Like I want to be able to take care of them as much as we can, because from my perception, like we're not going to raise them because like, they're not humans. They're not one of us. You can't raise them so much as just keep other humans from killing them, you know? (laughs) And that's the idea with me and my son, like kids aren't here to be raised. If anything, they're here to raise you because they're still fresh. So if we don't put our adultness into their mindset, we have the ability to grow up so much. And so like with this, whatever this next iteration of humanity looks like, we have the ability to learn from them. So much. and a better way to live because apparently we don't do it right, right? Oh, well, <laughs> like we're bring the destruction so it's, it's one of those like, things oh, it's one of those things kind of funny because i personally believe that i live as myself correctly so i mm-hmm. can say that i am a a one example of how to live correctly and i can believe that i am being myself and so there's one at least you know And so then I can do everything I can to demonstrate that for other people so that we can have more people who can actually own the fact that they're living a differentiated life. And, you know, I mean, you have an unfair advantage that no other being in the history of eternity can ever have. Like only you can have the unfair advantage that you have this time. Have you always been living correctly or was it a learning curve or well, I, I would say i was in my sales like they're like no this is who i am and you're not going to change that so yes, some right. people maybe it's the nine center or the you know fully defined nine to five easier people. yeah it's easier yeah. when you have more definition like i have literally all four motors so it's the mm-hmm. the the ego the solar plex the root and the sacral. Mm -hmm. These are the only four energy centers responsible for physical movement in any way, shape or form. And all all four of mine are defined to each other. Mm. (laughs) Super mover. Well, (laughs) the thing is, is I have no gate 21. So I have the 45 on the other side of it, but the gate Mm -hmm. 21 is the only aspect of ego that I don't have. And it's the gate of control. And Mm -hmm. so for me, it's like, I have this body and this body is going to do what this body does. And I have to be surrendered to what I am. And so basically what inner authority and type strategy gave me, especially PHS too. I love my PHS. What they gave me was they gave me my inner child back because Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was correct when I was a child, all children are just correctly being themselves, but then the world tries to bog you down and force you to be a certain strategic way. And I kind of lost it a little bit. I Mm -hmm. lost my way a little bit. 
but then after getting in touch with human design and these very mechanical perspective on reality, it's like, whoa, my inner child is alive again. Like he's right here with me every moment, every breath. It's just me, you know, like that little kid is still here. <laughs> nice. So it's good to see a lot of us know that we don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> the thing is i can know like i have i have gate 43. gate 43 mm -hmm. is the inner knowing mm -hmm. it is hearing a vibration that makes no sound okay but i don't have the 23. the 23 is responsible for breaking down the vibration which makes no sound and then taking those pieces and building it up together into a communication and so for me i'm not always able to accurately express what i know but I have mm -hmm. an inner knowing and I it. always know. But the thing is, I'm not certain because my mind it. is undefined. So I'm not certain but, about it. But even with that knowing, you know that because there's so much more to know that on the grand scale of things, you don't know. Like you well, only know what is, you don't I, know. Like, I learned, I discovered this is that the more I know, the bigger my awareness of what I don't know becomes because it's like a bonfire. It's like you have this tiny little fire and then it becomes a big roaring fire and the fire gets bigger and all of a sudden you just keep learning. It's it, it keeps going. It's like there's more darkness. The perimeter of darkness just gets bigger. And I'm always going to be ignorant. Yes, there's always going to be what I don't know. Yeah, but even so we know so I think we know it all, but we don't, we don't have a need to pull it all forth, right? So it's in there. And when it's a need or a necessity for you to know, then you know. Well, that's the magic as well from Bashar is that I know what I need to know when I need to know it. Not even a second sooner, not a second later and either. The, and that's the connection to your body that you have to, because the body doesn't forget like <laughs> stuff within you has been with you from jump even if every seven years it like there is a piece of you that is always there they've, they've got studies that show all already we have evidence and the science confirms dna memories 14 mm -hmm. generations you know like that goes really deep and then and if you go farther back the personality <laughs> crystal incarnation base is the same forever and so i've always been incarnating under my second base of evolution and identification i'm, I'm about identifying things that are moving in space and recognizing and maybe giving them a name mm -hmm. and i've always been evolutionary base from 15 billion years ago at the very beginning we all came from there. You know, it's like old soul, new soul. No, we've all been here from the beginning. We're all just soul and you, you're you just a little piece of whatever piece you are and cloaked in your, your body. But that, so yeah, that memory. Um, and so with women, when you're pregnant, they say that you're basically your grandmother's child just because of how that cord links back to your mother's mother. Wow. So like, and that's the her part of it all. Like there's just that feminine thing that's well, ever present in you and me and everybody. It doesn't go away because you're always like, you come from your mother, from her body, even if your dad's sperm had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. So it's just nice to be able to not know, but know what you need to know when you need to know it and to trust so there's that faith, yes. religion kind of misplaces, but to trust that you are going to know what you need to know. So there's no reason. My husband does not get me. He's like, no. you act like nothing is. And I'm like, why am I worrying about shit? Because, I mean, I'm not controlling it. So why wouldn't I feel comfortable we walking? See, that's, the, that's the thing <laughs> is because when, when you're strategic, when you're left, and when your mental decision-making process is overpowering your actual inner authority, when you're making decisions purely from your mind, when you are the controller, when you are the head of your destiny, 
and of your household. <laughs> right. Versus, versus, I don't have to have that kind of responsibility because I know that there are consciousness, there is hyper intelligence, there is a force that is infinitely more powerful than I am. And I'm at the whim of that force that's infinitely more powerful than me. And it's kind of nice because I can trust the guy upstairs or the girl downstairs or however you want to look at it. <laughs> I can trust that I was born for God, consciousness, whatever, to live life as a human, <laughs> this human. So why would I put myself, my God self, in situations that are going to end my experience and if i happen to end my experience then it was just time for it to be over and it's right. okay <laughs> like it's okay death is not the end it's just another transformation from all my studies and all my research what i see is here in this life we have a great opportunity because we're born into these physical bodies but these physical bodies specifically as different from say an ordinary mammal where there is no self-reflected consciousness at the point of developing self-reflected consciousness it, it appears that we actually gained the capacity for the creation of well you know the merkaba the vehicle of light and so mm. when we're in this life you can actually create a vehicle that your awareness your consciousness will hop into at death. And so instead of going back into reincarnation and trying again from some other meaty vehicle that's going to suffer and all this stuff, you build a vehicle made of light. And well, light doesn't suffer. And then you just go fly through infinity forever, you know, just. So my goal is 12 12 is to live authentically and bravely as me um, and just show up and have conversations with whoever comes into my vortex <laughs> yes <laughs> and experience life as me through me with me in relation to the chemistry that others bring around me so that's lovely so i think i think we're at a, a pretty good stopping point around now this will be the longest one i've had so far the question yeah. is if you have <laughs> any kind of self-plugging you want to do like any kind of referential links that i could put in the show notes for if you have a service or anything like that you could describe it now and send me links and I'll put them in the notes. Okay. So um, most of my platforms, I am either Queen Dahlia or the Queen Dahlia, T-H-E-E-Q-U-E-E-N-D-A-L-I-A. -E 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 and I offer one service, really. It is a transformational conversation. Nice. And this just developed from me noticing that when I talk to people, um, they tell me their problems. And by the time we get off, they've gained some new clarity. Um, so that is what I offer and that is what I do. And I don't know. And I just meet people where they are and mm. we decide what they need from there. Yeah. I thought you did great. I mean, we had a really lovely conversation. <laughs> Thank you. And so, yeah, if you just send that my way, then I'll be able to put the link in the notes. And anybody who okay. wants to reach out can find you. Yay us and yay whoever decides to watch us. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So thank All you. All right. See thank you, you for conversing. Social. Say what? I said see you on the socials. Mm. The socials. Yes. Yeah. See you on the other <laughs> side. Hopefully in person sooner or later. <laughs> yes. Yeah, nice. All right. All right. Bye. Take care. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Nice.